Well, good morning. Good morning to everyone who's uh, in the building. It's fantastic to see so many, uh, I'm going to say smiling faces. I can't obviously tell that, but uh, it's, it's still lovely to see uh, all, of these, all of these faces behind masks uh, here with us this morning. Uh, and welcome to everyone who's watching online too. Uh, if, you wanna, uh, if you're watching online, just let us know that the, the stream is working well, that, uh, that you can hear us nice and clear, that the camera's not rocking or any other of the many uh, issues that inevitably crop up when using technology. If you could let us know that everything is working well, that would be fantastic. So it's uh, another of our all-age services. We've now done one of these here and one of these at St. Luke's, and I think we're just about beginning to get it together, aren't we, Peter? I think we're starting to work out how it works. Peter's kind of feeling quite nervous. He's preaching, so uh, he's maybe not as agreeing uh, uh, strongly on the having it together yet. But he preached very well at St. Luke's, so let's see. Uh, I'm sure he has something good for us uh, here this morning at St. Mark's. We'll see. We'll see. You can, you can judge him afterwards. Uh, see, you know, give him your feedback. I don't have too many notices this morning to bring uh, to us. Uh, first of all, although I do want to uh, flag up that uh, Vicky has uh, expanded the, I'm going to call it the Trinity Parish branding empire. Uh, we now not only have clothes that are Trinity Parish branded, but we have now mugs, fridge magnets, and key rings. Vicky can supply any of these to you. Uh, and they look brilliant. They're really good. I, I, I'm really happy with them. I'm, uh, uh, so uh, if you uh, have a loved one who's in need of a, a, a mug, a fridge magnet, or key ring, or indeed you want one for yourself, please do chat to Vicky or fill out other forms at the back, Vicky. Uh, forms at the back, fill out your uh, order form and acquire uh, yet more Trinity Parish brand, uh, branded goods. The thing is, is that when we're inevitably a great success and this brand goes all over the world, you'll have one of the originals and it'll be worth a lot of money. So there's your incentive right there. The, uh, uh, just uh, want to flag up as well the Mission Week. I know you've probably heard us chat about this uh, from the front over the last uh, couple of months, but we're really excited that Greg is leading our Mission Week in August, Love Where You Live. It'll be beginning on the 22nd of August and uh, concluding on the 29th, and there's loads going on with that. Uh, so I don't want to kind of talk too much about it now, but uh, be aware there's a huge amount going on. Uh, chat to Greg or myself or, or anyone else uh, on the leadership team if you want to hear more. Uh, but it, it's going to be brilliant. I'm really excited. Uh, it's a chance for us to bless our communities in Jesus' name. Uh, I, I'm really excited by that. And uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, there's going to be volunteer sheets going out in the next couple of weeks, I hope, so that we can start recruiting as many people as possible because there's a whole load of jobs to do. But be aware of it and be praying because it's a really exciting time. Those dates again are the 22nd of August to the 29th. Uh, so keep those in your mind. Uh, my, last, uh, my last notice is uh, in a couple of weeks' time, on Saturday the 22nd, we're going to be having a day of prayer and seeking the Holy Spirit here at St. Mark's, and it's going to be brilliant. Uh, we're just going to uh, start praying around half ten uh, and spend some time in prayer for ourselves, for the parish, and seeking the blessing and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on us as we enter this, this really strange new season of kind of post lockdown, post-COVID, whatever that looks like, we need the spirits leading as we go into that. So it'd be fantastic to see you there for that. If you're someone who thinks, yes, a Holy Spirit day, that sounds brilliant, I'm, I'm, I'm there, then come and let me know so I know for numbers. If you're the sort of person who thinks, the Holy Spirit, that sounds super weird, I don't know what that's about, Come along and chat to, uh, have a chat to me afterwards because it'd be brilliant uh, for you to come and find out more and maybe explore this for yourself. If you're just not sure, you're somewhere in between those extremes, come chat to me anyway and uh, it'd be brilliant to see as many people as possible. Come along for that. Uh, just a day to pray and to seek after God's spirit and his blessing on us. It's going to be brilliant. I think that's all my notices for this morning. I can't think of anything else that particularly needs uh, flagging up. So... We're going to continue our sermon series on the Holy Spirit. Peter is going to be talking for us about the servant spirit, how the spirit equips us to serve a bit later on. So I'm really excited for that. But let's, uh, let's come into our service and we're going to use our all-age uh, all uh, response to begin our worship this morning. So here we go. God is good all the time. All the time. 
God is good. And now we say our Easter acclamation together. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Fantastic. So we're going to have our first song now. We did do this a few weeks ago, but I'm just going to remind you of the actions before we start. So this is called Noah Built the Most Enormous Boat. So let me run through the actions briefly. So we start with Noah Built the Most Enormous Boat to keep the birds and animals afloat. The Lord was good. The Lord was strong. And Noah lived his life for him. Verse 1. Then we've got Moses uh, Moses led his people through the Moses led his people through the sea, getting my actions mixed up, to set them uh, free from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Moses lived his life for him. And then the chorus goes, so thank you, oh thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me. And then uh, the next verse, we go... Uh, David fought, Goli- David fought Goliath and he won. A humble shepherd boy became a king. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and uh, David lived his life for him. Daniel was inside the lion's den, but God led him to safety once again. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong. Nah, 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 nah. Thank you, oh thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh thank you, that you were just the same when it comes to me. Jesus died to take away our sin, that we could get to know our God again. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong. We'll get it. Let's give it a try. I'll be doing the actions throughout. So if you want to stand, and we're going to, we can't sing, but we can do actions. So give it your best shot. Noah built the most enormous boat that kept the birds and animals afloat. The Lord was good. The Lord was strong and Noah lived his life for him. Moses led his people through the sea, taking them away from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong and Moses lived his life for Faithful. 
Fantastic. Thank you all. That was, that was some fantastic dance moves there. I'm very impressed. And uh, thank you, Andrew and Sarah. So we come now to our time of confession, where we recognize all those things that we've got wrong, all the ways we've not loved God and ways we've not loved each other. So we're going to uh, think for a moment and pause and bring before God all those things that we've done wrong this week. And then we're going to confess them together. Heavenly Father, we are sorry for all the ways we have not loved you with our whole hearts. Forgive us our sin. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for all the ways we have not loved others like we love ourselves. Forgive us our sin. Holy Spirit, we are sorry for all the ways we have not lived love. Holy Spirit, we are sorry for all the ways we have not lived as you want us to. Forgive us our sin. Holy Spirit, wash us with sins and help us to live like Jesus. Amen. Fantastic. We're now going to have Heather bring us our reading for this morning. Our first reading is taken from Acts chapter 6, reading verses 1 to 7, a passage entitled, The Choosing of the Seven. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give them our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Pacorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The numbers of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. This is the word of the Lord. Speak to God. Well, thank you to Heather for that reading, and uh, let's just pray for a moment. Oh, I've twisted round. I'm heading the wrong direction. How's that? Is that better? Can everybody hear me? Good. Good. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word to us this morning, and as we read your word, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would inspire us and reveal your truth to us, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, when we decide who's going to be uh, in a group, can anybody remember that time where they've been gathered in a room, and uh, two people have been selected as captains, and you're waiting there to be picked. Can anybody remember that? Yes. How does it feel? Are you kind of there? Who, who's, who's the sort of person saying, pick me, pick me, pick me, it's got to be me? Or are you the sort of person who might be thinking, oh, you know, 
actually, I'd rather not be picked. In fact, I don't really even want to be here at all. And uh, actually, I wonder if I can kind of sidle out of the room and not be the one that's been selected. Maybe it's a game that you don't like playing. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's football and you really don't like football. Hey, did you see the result from my team? Yesterday, 6-1, and we scored all the goals. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> but, you know, isn't it interesting, our humanness, when we're wanting to be chosen, when we want to be on the team, actually, we're the ones that push ourselves forwards. And actually, we've got something of the, I'm good at this, select me. I'll make all the difference on this team. It's something in our human nature, isn't it, that sort of cries out, that recognize me. This is about me, and uh, I'm going to be amazing in this team. So let's go and look at our reading now, having said that, and see what actually happens when uh, the disciples uh, are trying to select some new people to do some work as part of building the kingdom of God. So, a bit of a scene setting. We're, we're in the book of Acts. We've got to chapter 6. We've had a series up till now looking at the Spirit. Uh, and in fact, if you go back to chapter 2, you'll find that that's the day of Pentecost. Notice that Pentecost is 50 days. Pente means 50. Latin for 50. 50 days after Easter Sunday. It's 50 days since Jesus' uh, resurrection. Actually, before that, 10 days before his ascension. That's when Jesus ascends to heaven. And the disciples are told to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And they wait in an upper room, and they pray, and they pray. They're not scared. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes, and that's the day that Peter gives the most amazing sermon, and over 5,000 people are added to their number. This is a new, growing church. The, the Jewish authorities have tried to kill the leader, haven't they, Jesus? And they must be thinking, how on earth do we put this to a, a stop? And we'll see that the church is growing, and Peter and John, as we heard last week, are fearlessly, courageously, in the power of the Spirit, continuing to preach the Word of God, even when they are threatened with their, yeah, their own lives are threatened. So that's the setting. And at the end of chapter 5, you will read, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the, the Christ, the Messiah, the one who comes to save us, to save us from our sins and to help us to live life in all its fullness. If you know Jesus, this is good news. But actually in church, so there's a new church, it's formed, it's getting bigger, uh, and uh, can you believe it? There's a dispute, there's an argument that arises. Well, who would believe in church that arguments arise? But they do. And basically, this argument, when you look at the passage, it's between the Grecian Jewish Christians and the Hebraic ones. Those that speak Greek, those that speak Hebrew or Aramaic. The, the early church was basically formed with mostly Hebraic-speaking Christians from Jewish backgrounds. But here we have uh, two groups, the Grecian uh, the Grecian Jews who were, had become Christians, so they'd, been, uh, they'd become uh, absorbed, as it were, in the culture, and we have the, uh, the, the proper Jewish Christians who, uh, you know, that's, they speak the right language. And the, the argument was basically, hey, it's not fair, you're not looking after our widows, those that are vulnerable, those that are poor, like you are these others. Who's ever said those words? It's not fair. Yes, I have too. In fact, my dad, he used to reply by saying, Peter, you know what I'm going to say? Yes, <laughs> life isn't 
fair. Actually, there's, it's interesting, isn't it, that response, but you have to get used to the fact that you personally are not going to necessarily be treated how you'd want. That's just how life is. Life isn't fair. But uh, anyway, they're there saying, hang on a second, this isn't going the way we want it to go. Uh, and if you look at earlier in chaps, your, uh, Acts, you'll find that the church has got lots of money. There's no problem with handing out food and all of that because people share their possessions and they give to those in need. They are generous, just like all you lovely folk here. So there's no problem. The issue actually is a, a sense of it's not fair. You're treating, they're, they're being treated as second-class citizens. So what do they do? Well, the 12 apostles or the disciples, they meet together, they have a bit of a chat about it, they pray about it, and they come up with this solution. They say, choose seven men from amongst you, going back to the whole church, you've raised the issue, now here's our proposed solution that's spirit-led. You choose seven men who you think are wise, and full of the Holy Spirit. You choose. And all of the people say, well, we love this idea. We'll, this is a great idea. We're going to choose seven people. Now, isn't it interesting? This is a ministry to serve. But all of us who are Christians have a ministry to serve. My ministry to serve today is to share and open God's word to you. But we all have a ministry. We have a God-given ministry to share and to do it in love. To share God's word, to share of ourselves, to put others first. That is our call as Christians. It's not about me as an individual. It's not about you as individuals. It's about us as the body of Christ. And you'll know that in Corinthians, there's a lovely passage that talks about uh, that there are many gifts, but one body, the body of Christ. Jesus, you might notice, is not physically here now. His church is his body, and that is what we are called to do to build up his kingdom. So they chose seven men, and they had these things about them. They were people who they could all trust. They were going to be handling food and money. They were people who were filled with the Holy Spirit, so they had this ministry gifted. They had this ministry gift, the gift of specifically, and it says in our passage, serving and waiting on tables. But it's a ministry it's a ministry to build up the church, and it's also a ministry to release others in the way they have been gifted. So to release others to proclaim the word of God. And look, when the church works in this way, when it works in this way, look what happens. Many people came to know Jesus. When the church truly loves and serves and it's not about individuals wanting their own way or forcing their own way, then the church grows. The body of Christ grows. The kingdom of God is built. And look at all the opportunities in this parish that there are to serve. We've talked about the excitement of this mission week. We're looking forward to getting lists up at the back, looking forward to people volunteering. But actually, before you volunteer, come along to the Holy Spirit Day to be prayed for, because the other thing you'll find is that when they had chosen these seven people, the apostles commissioned them for that ministry. They were prayed over. They were prayed over to be commissioned, but also empowered by the Holy Spirit to carry out the task. So they didn't mess it up. So they did it under the authority of the church. But how about that for a way of solving a conflict? Isn't that brilliant, isn't it? Actually, there's a problem. 
but the people, the, the Grecian Jews who raised the problems were absolutely pleased with the solution because they were people of faith, not raising the issue because they wanted to raise an issue, but because they wanted a solution. And that is the way the church is built up, by every person knowing their calling and their gifting and we discover that as we go deeper into God's words and we pray for one another to be filled with the Spirit and then the gifts come to the surface. People recognize your gifts and then you will find yourself called into service, to serving in the power of the Holy Spirit. I've got two examples that I'd like to just mention as I finish. A lot of you know Alison Cross. And Alison Cross, sadly, is struggling with an illness that is, uh, that is incurable. But she, as a person, up until her illness, was always... She was the first to get the merchandise. <laughs> the first to get, in fact, Simon's here with his uh, hoodie on. Vicky's got her her polo shirt on, the Trinity Parish. She identified with us as the body of Christ. But she was always first to serve, that quiet presence. When we were doing children's work on Grange Park, when that first started, she was there. Running the charity shop in Poulton, she was there. All of those things, a life of loving service. The other example I wanted to give was uh, my, uh, my eldest son, he's 33 this year, can you believe it? But his godparent, uh, a lovely couple, Jill, Jill and Randall Cousins, uh, Jill, if you're watching online, lovely to, uh, to see you. She lives in Warwick still, uh, and uh, Randall died um, in 2014, I think, or 15 now. But uh, they had just joined a church in Warwick And uh, Randall, lovely chap, he was head of maths at Warwick School. He'd run uh, scripture union camps uh, at Lakeland activities. He'd seen many young people come to know Jesus as Lord. And he joined this church, and he'd been there a few years. And at his funeral, the one thing that they remembered him for was he was the guy at the end of the service with his marigolds on cleaning the church toilets. I just mentioned that because that's about where our hearts are for building up Jesus' work in this place. May God bless you as you seek God's calling and that calling of the Holy Spirit to serve him in this place. Amen.
I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the God that we serve. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated for our time of prayer. Just wanted to uh, refresh our minds as we come to our time of prayer. We learned uh, a few weeks ago the sign for come Holy Spirit. And it'd be brilliant as we come to our time of prayer to do that again. So if you remember rightly, we go come Holy Spirit. Spirit. So let's all say that together, both with words and with sign. Come, Holy Spirit. And Greg's going to lead us in prayer. Let's just bow our heads and, uh, and offer up our prayers to the Lord. Hallowed Father in heaven, hear us as we call out to you in prayer. We thank you that you are a God who loves each of us for who and what we are. We thank you for the grace and mercy that you have shown us and for the good things that you have provided us with. And we thank you now for the good things that you will continue to provide. We lift up to you, Lord, this broken world, this world that you created and placed into our stewardship, a task that we have failed on many fronts as it groans with the hurt of conflict, selfishness, and greed, we ask that you soften the hearts of those hell-bent on harm and hatred. Bring peace, love, and tolerance, and a desire for all to live together in harmony. Lord, we pray for the persecuted church, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, who are persecuted, tortured, even killed for their love and belief of you. Surround them with your mighty arms and protect them. We thank you that we are free to worship you without fear of reprisal. Lord, we pray for world leaders 
that when they make the decisions that affect each of us, they make them with the values that you have taught. Guide and strengthen them, Lord, to lead our nation fairly, honestly, and with a genuine concern for the poor, the homeless, and the marginalized. At this time, Lord, we pray for the people of India as they fight against the pandemic. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, and we ask that nations can come together to help in whatever way they can. Today also, Lord, we pray for the families of those people, mainly innocent children, killed as a result of a terrorist bomb called in Afghanistan yesterday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those that hold positions of leadership within the wider world church, and in particular those in leadership within our own diocese, bishops Julian, Jill and Philip, all our clergy, our lay workers, and all those who work tirelessly behind the scenes to keep our churches running smoothly. Give them all the strength and wisdom and spirit to make the right decisions that church vision, about church vision and growth. We pray for our own head of state, our queen. Fill her and her family with your Holy Spirit and strength at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for those who have been affected by the last year, physically, mentally, or financially, for those who have lost loved ones and for those whose lives will never return to the old normal. We ask, Lord, that you will give us the strength and confidence to be ready to come alongside those who have held things together up to now but may stumble in the future. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and for those that are caring for them and for people who are mourning the loss of family or friends. Fill them with your spirit and strength. Let them know that you are beside them. We pray for those who have asked specifically for your grace. We pray for, pray for Arthur Thompson, Alice's family, and Susan Sybertham. We pray for Caroline and her mum and dad. Give Caroline the strength to do what she needs to do in support of her family. And in the silence, we lift up to you all the people that are on our minds at this time. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We lift our own hurts and hopes, our fears and our concerns, our defeats and our victories to you and ask for your grace and mercy. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may go out and serve, equipped and in your strength, responding to your calling to share the gospel with all we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we bring our prayers together now as we say the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have our final song in a minute. Uh, but first of all, Holly, could you uh, uh, fetch something for me? We're going to uh, give a bit of a demonstration of, uh, 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 of what it looks like when we... Uh, all serve together, how, how all of this works in practice. So uh, hopefully on the way in, you manage to sign your name on this big sheet of paper. Uh, so we're going to have a look at it now. Holy, fantastic work. There's servant ministry right here, isn't it? So <laughs> thank you very much. So let's hold it up. Let's hold it up. You got, you get, you've got it there. That's good. So a body. There you go, and all of our names written in it. So, we are together the body of Christ. We are here to serve one another 
and serve the world. So, for instance, let's show how that works. Let me pick a name at random. So I could say, Greg, let's pick, uh, uh, we've got Greg on there. So I could say, Greg, I've got a fantastic deal for you. Everyone here, everyone whose name is written down, is your servant. Isn't that brilliant? That sounds pretty good for you. You can retire now, can't you? <laughs> You commit yourself wholly to all the, all the other stuff that you do, because Greg does about a million different things. So, you know, it's going to be quite handy for him to have this many uh, servants. There's only one problem with that. Only one problem with the fact that Greg gets all these servants. He then has to be a servant to every single other person on this list. That's how it works. That's the deal. And I could pick every single name on here, every single one of us, and say... Guess what? Every single other person in the room is your servant. But the thing is, you're their servant too. We are all called to be servants to one another. So that's the first part. But here's the thing. There's a second uh, element to this deal. Not only are we servants to one another, we're also servants to everyone else. We are called not only to serve here, not only to serve one another, but to serve our world, to serve those around us, those that we love, and our wider communities. That's a pretty big task. There's about 18,000 people in our parish, isn't there, Peter? That's a lot of people to serve. I'm not sure I'm quite ready to be a servant to all of those people, except here's the thing. The Holy Spirit gives us the strength to do this. The Holy Spirit gives us what we need to serve one another to serve God and to serve our communities. So I can point to another random name on the list. I can go, Helen, Helen, you are filled with the Holy Spirit to make you a servant to the church, to God, and to the world. I can pick another one. Margaret, you are filled with the Holy Spirit to be a servant of God, the church, and the world. I can even pick Holly. I promise I wouldn't embarrass her, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> Holly, you are filled with the Holy Spirit to be a servant of the church, of everyone in here and the world. But don't worry, everyone else gets to be your servant too. So it's not a completely rubbish deal. That is what we're talking about today, because together we are the body of Christ, here to be Jesus' hands and feet on whatever else is needed for the world. If you didn't manage to sign your name on it on your way in, Please do sign it on the way out. We'll, uh, we'll grab some Sharpies at the end uh, and can add your names on. And as you do, as you look at this, as you think about it, pray and ask God, what is it that you are calling me to do? That might be here in church. It's also out in the world. What We are all called to serve in so many different ways. How can you be a spirit-filled servant wherever God has placed you? Thank you, Holly. You can put it down now. You're good. I appreciate I'm going to leave this here. And as I say, if you haven't managed to sign it on the way in, please do sign it on the way out. We're going to have a song that, uh, that sort of touches on some of these themes, and it's another action song, so I'm going to teach you some actions now. So uh, we start with some of us are big and tall. Some of us are very small. Some of us like pink, and some like blue. Some of us like reading books. Some of us like feeding ducks. That's because we're different. Me and you. Now, and then the chorus goes, this is where you're going to need some energy, but God loves everyone he's made, and God loves each of us in a special way. Now, here's where you have to get energetic, because when we've done that bit, we all say together, and you, 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 and And as you say you, you point to different people in the room, because, guess what, we're all part of the big family of God. And then the second verse goes, can we have the second verse, please? Some of us have curly hair. Some of us have specs to wear. All of us have different families. Some of us are very loud. Usually we shout at that point, but we can't sing, so we're just going to have to mime shouting. Some of us don't make a sound. That's because we're different, you and me. But God loves everyone the same, and God loves everyone in a special way. That's you and you and you and you and you and you and you. Do you get the idea? I'll be doing the actions again. So let's stand, and we're going to sing together, Big Family of God, because we're all part of the Big Family of God. Some of us are big and tall. 
some of us like pink and some like blue. Some of us like reading books, some of us like feeding ducks. That's because we're different, me and you. Done, Sarah. That was uh, that was challenging. We're going to have to try that again sometime, aren't we? I think. Let's stay standing, shall we, as we finish our service. So, as the big family of God, called to serve one another, called to serve our Lord, and called to serve our world, let's go out into the world. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Fantastic. We'll all be leaving through the fire door. And as we go, Sarah's going to be singing, Oh Jesus, I have promised. <laughs>